Shalom Aleichem, my good friends. Now that we have, uh, uh, I mean, uh, we have arrived in the land of Israel, we are going to read the Shabbat Parashat Bamidbar. But outside the land of Israel, they are still going to be, they are going to read Parashat Bechukotai, which we read last week. So therefore we are going to discuss a few thoughts regarding Parashat Bechukotai. Now this parasha begins with the words Im Bechukotai Telechu meaning if you walk with my laws, my statutes Ve'et mitzvotai tishmeru and if you will observe my commandments, then the Torah tells us, I shall give you rain in its time, which means prosperity will come upon you, and many good things, and so forth, as you can see in the first verses of this parasha. Number one question. Why did the Torah say in Bechukotai, Telechu, you walk with my hukot, with my laws. It means that you, you, if you observe my commandments, what is written in the Torah. If that's the case, then what, why is it that it continues saying, and you will observe my mitzvot, my commandments? You have to come to the conclusion that bechukotai telechu, you walk with my laws has to do with something else not only the observance of the commandments but something else in fact Rashi was the one who asked this question and that's the reason why he came to the realization that here the Torah means something else walking with the laws of Hashem means to study Torah but not only to study Torah, to labor. That's what Rashi suggests. That you will be laboring with the Torah. It's not enough to study. You could read, 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 and cover the whole Talmud after seven years, and you forget everything. But if you labor, that means you do reviews and uh, all kinds of learning you go in depth that definitely will help you to remember and that's what makes a learning real learning and by the way this is my suggestion that if you learn with depth every page of the Talmud let's as I said many times if you learn the Talmud of Masechet Shabbat the tractate of Shabbat but you learn it well I mean, you labor upon it. You sweat to understand every difficult case regarding the laws of Shabbat. You will end up not only knowing the, ch the chapters very well of the laws of Shabbat, but you will end up observing Shabbat properly. Kahalacha. And our sages said, Kola Shomer Shabbat Kehilchata. If one observed the Shabbat according to the laws, which means there are many people who observe Shabbat, but do they do it out of great knowledge, out of deep knowledge of the laws of Shabbat? Not many. But the real Torah scholar studies the, the tractate of Shabbat and he will end up paying attention to all the particularities of Shabbat, otherwise it's impossible to avoid a sin regarding Shabbat. But a person who does it kahalacha, according to the law, will not make a mistake at all when it comes to the observance of Shabbat. This man deserves that even if once he was an idol worshipper, like in the worst kind of generation, the generation of Enosh, still from heaven they will forgive him. Of course, that's another issue for which I have another uh, different uh, explanation, but that has to do with a different kind of lecture. 
So we are talking now about our parasha, Bechukotai. So therefore Rashi says to labor uh, in the Torah, in the learning of Torah, is essential to the knowledge of Torah. And that's what will bring the reward of prosperity, rain in its season, and the land will give you with generosity its product of the land. All this means great prosperity. Also, peace will be established in the land of Israel. Which, by the way, what we can suggest here that if all the population of the land of Israel would keep the Shabbat properly, we come back again to the to the idea of Shabbat, or keep the laws of the Torah properly, then there's no problem with peace. There will be peace, because it is Hashem who, who brings peace. It's not the Arabs who refuse to do peace with us. It's Hashem who still doesn't let them think that it's worth it for them to, do, to make peace with, with us. Why? Because that's the reason for being there. They are there to harass us, so that one day we will understand, so that we will wake up and become Shomre Shabbat and become religious and become people who pay attention to the laws of the Torah and observe them. We do that, everything is solved properly. Unfortunately, we are still far from reaching this kind of uh, destination. We hope and pray that something will happen that will change the minds of people. Unfortunately, the majority of the Jewish people in the land of Israel, really, unfortunately, they still don't get it. They don't get it. Last week we had fires that destroyed a real destruction of uh, villages that were beautiful and everything were completely consumed by fire. Now we know it happened immediately after the, fam the famous uh, uh, desecration of Shabbat with the Eurovision. That uh, we know. Of course, it means other things also. But the point is that we are still we are not willing to open our eyes. Another example: next week or in a few in a few days, they are going to have again another demonstration in Jerusalem. The city of peace, the city of Torah, the city of God. That's the city that they choose to, to have a parade of all the, those people who are known to be homosexuals. It is just terrible. What's going on with us? What kind of stubbornness is this? When are we going to open our eyes? When the, the Talmud says, if all the Jewish people will be united in one single Shabbat, in other in places it says two Shabbatot, but one single Shabbat to be united to do the Shabbat properly, it will bring the Mashiach. And I always explain, it means unity. There is unity of all the opinions. Of course, uh, uh, the, the uh, unity in the, the, in the understanding and the faith that we should have that God is asking us to do many things that the Torah compels us to do. If we do that, the Mashiach will come. The redemption will follow immediately. Miyad Nigalim. We have explained that several times before in many occasions. The question is here. So we said, so Rashi was under the obligation to make that point that you should not only study the Torah you should go in depth with it laboring which means don't take it lightly as a, as a, as a, as a book that you read before you fall asleep it's something that you have to take up with a friend, with a chavruta and learn a piece of Gemara with the proper understanding and the proper depth then we, you come out a winner in everything. And you bring Tikkun Olam also. And that's So now, so that's what uh, caused Rashi to, uh, to explain that this refers, who refers to the labor of Torah. Why? What is the connection? In Bechukotai Telechu, walking. Number one, we have to understand what is walking while learning Torah? We did find in the Mishnah of Pirkei Avot 
that there is such a notion, there is such a concept, ha'olech baderech veshone. When a when a guy goes walking, he's walking and learning Torah. The suggestion here is that you never stop from learning Torah. Like uh, in, we read in Shema, Veshinantam levanecha vedibartabam, you always have to speak words of Torah, to teach your children Torah. Veshivtecha bevetecha, whether you are at home sitting in peace. Uvlechtecha baderech, and also when you go on your way. Of course, the pshat means if you travel or something, never forget to take with you your Talmud, your books that you have to continue to. I mean, if you sit in the plane for 12 hours from uh, from Israel to uh, to America, uh, you need a book, right? You have to study. I mean, usually I don't fall asleep, so I, I study all the time in those 12 hours. So it becomes beneficial this way. I don't have to prepare when I arrive to New York. I don't have to prepare to make a speech or to give a lecture. Everything is well prepared where during the the flight. But it means also walking. It does not mean also only traveling. Those were times in which uh, great sages, they never stopped from learning. They say about Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, that uh, he, 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 he concluded the whole Shas, all the Talmud, the entire Talmud, he made, of course he did it many times, but he had a special Se'uda, a special Siyum, special only for those few minutes when he stands to wait for the bus. He's waiting for the bus, so he's using a book. And he's, he goes on through the page of Talmud. One day, he made a feast because he finished the whole Talmud just because of those few minutes. So you see that you can do so much, you can achieve so much, even with one or two minutes every now and then. If you allow me, let me bring here a chidush, a nice uh, understanding of what the sages say. There is a statement in the Talmud, in Masechet Shabbat again, that when a person goes to heaven, after 120, hopefully, he will be asked questions. Question number one, he will be asked if he dealt in his uh, profession, in his work, with honesty. Anasata venatata be'emuna. With full faith, you, need, you did not rob people, you did not lie, but you did everything properly. And then the second question is, Hakavata itim la Torah? Did you have a fixed time? for learning Torah, which means every day, at least one hour, two hours, three hours a day. But fixed, nothing will change. I mean, if there is a phone call, you don't pick up the phone at that time. If that time is, is all sanctified, for it's all consecrated to the learning of Torah. So you don't answer the phone at that time. So that means you have established one hour in your, in your days that are not changeable in any case. That's the whole point. Kavata. What is kavata? It's like if you take nails and you you you, you hit them in order to let something that you fix on the on the wall or something it does not budge. Same thing also when you fix a time for Torah. Then it's something that has to be fixed, well established. Not if something happens, then you, or for, for example, you have, a, uh, you have to go to the doctor. Many times I tell my friends, my students, I tell them, why didn't you come yesterday uh, uh, in time? Or why didn't you come at a certain lecture? Yeah, I'm sorry, I had to be by the doctor. Did you try to, let's say the doctor told you to arrive at 9 o'clock in the morning. Did you try to tell him, I'm sorry, but at 9 o'clock I have a shi'ur, then I, I will appear before you uh, at, at 10. Did you try? Most people don't even try. The doctor said, 9, that's it. So, he lost one lecture. That's not the way. Hakavata itim la Torah means klikboa in Hebrew, like we said, the, the blessing of the mezuzah. What is the blessing of the mezuzah? We say likboa mezuzah. What is likboa? To practically to put the mezuzah on the doorpost in a way that will it will not fall, it will not budge at all. That's called likboa. So hakavata means that the, the times of Torah that you dedicate 
to God must be fixed and not changeable in any case. Well, when it is a matter of life and death, then uh, of course, well, who am I to say no? But that's the whole philosophy is there. Not to... Now, let me... I didn't finish my chidush. The problem is that there is a, a, a seemingly big contradiction from the Talmud Yerushalmi. The Jerusalem Talmud, in, at the end of Masechet Brachot, it says there, Kol koveya itim la Torah keilu mefer berit. Anybody, anybody who fixes times, the way we explained, of Torah, which means he, he doesn't change one hour is dedicated for Torah or two hours, a time that's fixed. Anyone who does this, according to Talmud Yerushalmi, he has profaned the covenant with God. What does it mean? We just learned in Masechet Shabbat that they even asked the individual, did you fix time for Torah? Understand the question? This is a big contradiction, apparently. How could you say somebody who has every day a time that is fixed to learn Torah, you say that he is a sinner? How could you? And he profanes the covenant with God, the berit. Kilu mefer berito. That's not berit milah, but the covenant of God. That it says in the, that it says in the scriptures, im lo beriti yomam v'alei lachukot shamayim v'aretz lo samti. The prophet says, if it's not for my covenant of Torah, Brit is called Torah, then I would not bother to create Yomam Balayla day and night, Hukot Shamaim Va'aretz, the laws of the universe. All this means nothing to me, God says. I did all this, why? So that there will be people who study Torah every day. So this guy studies every day, he has a fixed time for it. So why do you say he is like profaning, desecrating? the covenant with God. How is it possible? Especially that, that that's the second question that they ask him. But you see, if you want to know, to my humble opinion, if you want to know the answer to this, what gave me peace at least, personally, is you have to ask another question. Why is it if the Torah is so important, if Kvi'ut Itim, to fix time for Torah, as we learned in Masih and Shabbat, that it is so important, why is it that it appears as a second question? Why is it that the first question is, first, did you work? Did you have your uh, livelihood with honesty, full faith and honesty? It should have been, the first question should have been, did you fix time for Torah? I say, and I think it's the truth, that there in the, in, in the Talmud in Masechet Shabbat is talking about a person who has to work. God bless him. Everybody has to work. Gedola melacha, our sages said. To work and occupation is very greatly appreciated. But at the same time, you still have some time in the evening. You come back from work. What do you do? You go to pray Mincha and Arvit. Between Mincha and Arvit, you have a a time that one hour, for, for example, that you dedicate to Torah. Did you do that? That's the question in the Talmud, in Masechet Shabbat. We're talking about people who work. That's the reason why the first question is if they were honest in their occupation. And then comes Kviyot Etim La Torah. But the Talmud Yerushalmi does not mean people who work. He means those people who have time all day. Let's say, let's say a guy rich, he doesn't need to, to go to work, he has everything. So he decides that from now on, from 8 to 9, I'm going to study Torah. Fixed. Impossible to change. Very nice. But at the same time, you still have the whole day for you. Why do you spend the whole day then in wasting your time by going to, by playing golf, uh, so to speak, or by pl uh, playing checkers, or, or who knows what? And he, his conscience, conscience is, is very peaceful. Why? I have, I already done my hour of Torah. But that's not the point. One hour of Torah or any fixed time that you have for you is only for people who have to go to work for their livelihood. Then they set aside one time for Torah. Very nice. And no question about it. But people who have time, they are not allowed to use that time for other things. 
the fact that you have fixed only one uh, limited time for Torah and the rest is given to you by doing anything you want that's it you are, you are practically desecrating the covenant of God because it says that the Torah people who can then there is no there is no uh, stop day and night you have to study of course you have to eat you have to sleep you have to those those things cannot uh, cannot be avoidable you understand but otherwise all your available time should be given to Torah that's the point and that's what we call amal amelim but Torah laboring on Torah it goes for both individuals the guy who has an occupation and he can give only one hour for Torah God bless him because that's what he can give that's also called labor he comes back from work very tired but instead of going home to, uh, to eat quickly and to sleep he goes first to study his hour of Torah and then he comes back home for him we say God bless you but the guy who has all the time of the world in his hands he's not allowed to use that time to waste it in other things he has to use it only for Torah for some people this might sound exaggerated that's not true I mean it says so you have to study Torah day and night and uh, even the Talmud in Masichet Barachot asks uh, a question uh, if you want to learn uh, you know non-Jewish philosophy okay when so the Talmud says you go and find the time which is not a day and which is not a night some people explain that it means when you are in the bathroom I used to, I used to read the National Geographic in the bathroom because it's clean and full of knowledge why not but outside that if you are a person who is a Torah learner and that's all you have that's all you have to do is learning Torah non-stop unless if you are dead tired and we know of many great sages who in the middle of the night they would wake up at 3 o'clock in the night and they would sit down and learn Torah I remember the film the Rabbi El Yashiv in the middle of the night there was a camera there and they filmed him learning with dexterity and with labor when? three o'clock in the morning there's another story of the son-in-law of the Netziv the Netziv, a tremendous Torah scholar who gave us a wonderful commentary besides other books the Ahmed Davar the Netziv is an acronym for Rabbi Naftali Tzvi Yehuda Berlin he was a great man he, he never went to sleep so once uh, his son-in-law came at midnight to ask him a question how to explain a certain passage so he found him delving in his books so he said to him my father-in-law tell me you never sleep he says why do you sleep he says well, of course I immediately have to, I have to go to sleep well I didn't know I thought you that you spent all your night studying Torah I'm not saying this as if, of course this is an exaggeration I mean the Chafetz Chaim himself in his yeshiva used to come at night late at night to the Bet Midrash and see if there is any Talmud any students who stays there for long he would tell him go to sleep this way you wake up in the morning fresh and willing to learn again but talking about special people some spell you know for example the Gra the Gaon of Vilna he is you know when he slept apparently there, there is uh, witnesses they were witnesses that he never slept so but what do you mean he never slept I mean he is a human being he slept two hours only those two hours were divided in four half hour every time why it's like King David the Talmud says in Masichet Sukkah that King David never slept he was learning Torah all night uh, well why but he did sleep something impossible without it he slept in a very light way which means he did not bring himself into deep sleep why? because deep sleep is like death he, he didn't want to taste the taste of death that's what our sages said so he allowed himself to, to, to dorm a little but not to go in full deep sleep 
You understand? But those are special people. I'm not saying this, that, that. On the contrary, one should pay attention to his health first and sleep uh, seven, eight hours, if that's what his health requires. Some people got used to sleep much less. But normal people, usually that's what they sleep. Like it says in the, there is a verse in the in Tehillim, Yashanti uh, az yanuachli. Az alef zayin, that's one plus seven. That means eight hours. If I sleep eight hours, yanuachli, then I get my rest. If this is required, that's what one should do. But then, if it is for the purpose to learn Torah all day, without slumbering and without uh, being uh, bored and everything. So that's what Rashi says, amelim. the labor of Torah requires sacrifices in this life. Why? Because the Torah is the life of our soul. I mean, the Talmud says, Kol or Torah or to or Torah Anyone who has the light of Torah in him. As we have explained, there are people, I mean, most people, they go for their work every day. But many of them will come back and learn their time that's fixed. That's called Or Torah, a light of Torah. So you, those who have a light of Torah, at least a fixed time of Torah, then Or Torah Mechayehu, that light, that spark of life for the soul, that's what will give him the power to live forever in the, in the heavens. We have to believe in that. I mean, it's, we have to understand. I mean, uh, let's admit Without the Torah, there would be no Jewish people today. At least we have to appreciate the Torah for that point. But we have to we have to understand that if it was not for the Torah that the people of Israel learned every generation, despite the persecutions, despite all the, the troubles that we had throughout 2,000 years, what kept them alive is the study of Talmud, the study of Torah. So we have to appreciate it. But people who go to work in the morning, they come back at night, they're dead tired, then they go to sleep, to eat something and go to sleep. Or to sit down and watch television. What is going to happen? These people are going to remain Amaretz, people that are ignorant of anything in the Torah. At the same time, they will not have the spark of life. Yes, I dare say it. I dare say it because I believe in it. Now, people who don't believe in it, let's say, for example, one... He deals with charity all the time. Uh, very nice. All the time he gives charity non-stop. But he never learns Torah. There is a story of an individual like this. He was a rich man. He became the address of all the Gabaim, the collectors of tzedakah, of charity. And he gave charity all the time. But he did not learn Torah. And then comes the time when he passes away. He dies. He goes to heaven. A man is, uh, has uh, lived his life with charity all the time. So, the angel in charge looks upon his record and he says, Very good. You are worthy to go into paradise. Your paradise is going to be full of perfumes, of beautiful trees and beautiful things. Go, my friend, go. He takes the let's say, the mafteach, the key, and he goes to his place in heaven, and he opens, and he goes in it. Indeed, he smells beautiful aroma of the marvelous things there, but he cannot see anything. Why? He, he hollers, wait a minute, he says, he went to the angel, you forgot to open the light. What light? What happened? So he looks again at the record. Ah, the angel says, I see. You have a problem. Of course, you're marvelous. God bless you. You did great. But you didn't learn Torah. And you expect to have light? There's no light without Torah. So he has to go into his paradise, not enjoying the sights of marvelous sights that he could see if there was light. Because the light is Torah. Like it says in the book of Proverbs, King Solomon said, you know, the mitzvah, the commandment that you do, like charity, for example, is an, a candle. But a candle needs a match with which to, to light it, a wick that has to be lighted, fire. 
But where is, from where do we get the light? The mitzvah is known as a candle. But the Torah is the light. So without the light, uh, how much importance do you give to the candle? Kiner mitzvah ve Torah or ve orchot chayim tochechot musar. That's a verse in the book of Proverbs. So we understand that if one does whatever he can, if that's what you can, is only give one hour, fine! But make sure that's all you can. Because if you you take that time, but you leave the rest of the time wasted, then my friend, you're going to find out that you made a bad deal to waste your time when you could have used it for Torah learning is a very big problem. Let's hope and pray that uh, Hashem should convince our heart that He should bring into our heart the desire to learn Torah. The desire that will go on and becomes more and more prominent to the point that one day we will have the zchut, the merit to be occupied primarily with Torah. And if you have to work, great there is a great reward for working and bringing livelihood to your family but at the same time don't forget not one day without Torah whether it is one hour or even half hour but at least a light of Torah a spark of Torah something but one should not feel exonerated if he knows he has time for himself then his responsibility is very great. He has to learn Torah. Otherwise, he cannot have the light. And he need light to survive in the heavens forever and ever. It's always possible to do Teshuvah, my friends. If you, don't, if you are not a Torah learner, it's time to start. And remember, even a little bit of Torah can help. So therefore, there is no contradiction between what our sages said in the Talmud in Masechet Shabbat to what it says, what the, what the sages said in Talmud Yerushalmi in Masechet Berachot. Each one according to his situation. You understand? So may God bless you and give us the blessing of Torah. Amen.